Good afternoon, everyone. Let's now pray the angelus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, your grace and your hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of Christ by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, O Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let's now begin the Eucharistic celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends, today the Mother Church celebrates the nativity of St. John the Baptist. As we know from our scripture, he was preparing the way for the Lord, and he was so humble, and also he was so courageous in telling people and also, we understand how, how wonderful his birth was and how his parents were so happy when they had him at their very late ages in their lives. So as we come to celebrate this feast today, let's acknowledge God's, um, let, let us acknowledge our failures and ask God for his forgiveness and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Today as we celebrate this solemnity, let's now joyfully proclaim, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. I offer this Mass for Emilia Kukubia, who is deceased. O oh God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for Christ the Lord, give your people, we pray, the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the way of salvation and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Islands, listen to me. Pay attention, remotest peoples. The Lord called me before I was born. From my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword. He hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I have toiled in vain. I have exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while, my cause was with the Lord, my reward with my God. I was honored in the eyes of the Lord. My God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken. He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I praise you for I am wonderfully made. I praise you for I am wonderfully made. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. You mark me when I walk or lie down. All my ways lie open. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. For it was you who created my being, knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for the wonder of my being, for the wonders of all your creation. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. Already you knew my soul. My body held no secret from you when I was being fashioned in secret and molded in the depths of the earth. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul said, God made David the king of our ancestors, of whom he approved in these words. I have elected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out my whole purpose. To keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus, as Saviour, whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal. My brothers, sons of Abram's race, and all you who fear God, this message of salvation is meant for you. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. You, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The time came for Elizabeth to have her child, and she gave birth to your son. And when her neighbors and relations heard that the Lord had shown her so great a kindness, they shared her joy. Now, on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. They were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother spoke up. No, she said, he is to be called John. They said to her, but no one in your family has that name. 
and made signs to his father to find out what he wanted him called. The father asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they were all astonished. At that instant, his power of speech returned, and he spoke and praised God. All their neighbors were filled with awe, and the whole affair was talked about throughout the hill country of Judea. All those who heard of it treasured it in their hearts. What will this child turn out to be? They wondered. And indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew up, and his spirit matured, and he lived out in the wilderness until the day he appeared openly to Israel. And dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today the Mother Church celebrates the nativity of St. John the Baptist. In the liturgical calendar of the Church, Church celebrates the birthday of our Blessed Mother, birthday of, the, of our Lord and John the Baptist. That shows us how important they are in, the plan, in God's plan. And today we listen to the story how Zachariah and Elizabeth were very happy because we knew and they were very advanced in age and the, and the mercy of God and the compassion of God was on this wonderful couple. And when the naming ceremony takes place, you know, um, she says he is to be called John, which means the Lord is gracious. And when the, when the relatives resisted, and when, John, when Zachariah um, um, himself wrote that he is to be called John, then he began to get the speech um, back, and how the whole people were so happy about it. So today, what I want to reflect with you, the important mission that is given to John the Baptist. He was given the task to prepare the way for the Lord. He prepared the chosen people to welcome Messiah by preaching to them and repentance and the renewal of life that he was constantly talking about. First and foremost, what really jumps out of my reflection is that how humble he was. He was very clear about his mission. That mission was to prepare the way and show to the people that here is the Messiah that whom you should follow. As we know from the scripture, when John started preaching, you know, people thought that he is the Messiah, that he is to, he is to be followed. And he was very, very clear in his role as a person who was supposed to prepare. He says, I am not the one whom you should follow. The one who comes after me he is greater than I. So that level of humility, because we live in a time where sometimes, you know, we like to be praised, we like to be, you know, acknowledged in front of the people. And sometimes we know for ourselves that, you know, I don't sometimes deserve that credit, but yet we like to grab it because that's how we feel sometimes happy about it when people praise him, praise us. But, you know, John the Baptist was very, very clear. He was very clear. He was very clear to the core that his role is to prepare the way for the Lord, talking to them. And he was also courageous, you know, told the people off at times because they were not doing the right thing. So today as we celebrate um, this solemnity, the great personality in the, in the person of John the Baptist, let's continue to ask the Lord for the gift of humility because that humility can take us far away, far, far ahead in our lives because when I really dispose myself in the presence of God, telling God, you know, how humble I am and how sometimes sinful I am, that can really bring us, bring us the lots of God's, God's grace in our lives. So let's pray for this grace and continue to pray for every individual who really suffered um, in their journey of faith as we endure this painful pandemic. Let's stand and profess our faith as we celebrate this celebrity. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we are for you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's Savior and pointed him out when he came, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, Saint John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing, even in the womb he leaped for joy. At the coming of human salvation, he alone, of all the prophets, pointed out the lamb of redemption, and, no, and to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism, and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your day, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life on the channels of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, Don, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Emilia and Alangaram, whom you have called from this world to your soul. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done at the cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Let's now offer each other God's peace. Peace to you all. Peace to you. Lamb of God. Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly lamb, we pray, O Lord, that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, go forth. The Mass is ended. Thank you and wish you all a good day. Thank you.